Hey everybody, Brandon here from Cat Intentions, and in today's video, I'm going to show you a handful of tips, tricks, and shortcuts when it comes to digitizing uh, PDFs or old drawings, as well as inserting and using reference images like this one here in AutoCAD. The tricks are going to speed up your process and show you some slick ways to import images and PDFs directly into AutoCAD in a way that may save you some time. So let's jump right into today's video. So whether you're working from a scanned map or old detail or drawing, or you're working from an image like this, uh, when you're dealing with any kind of image file or a flattened PDF, the best way is to insert these as an XREF or external reference into your drawing. To do this, you can go to the insert tab up here and choose the reference kind of flyout and right click and you can attach a variety of different file types. This is going to be the most straightforward and easiest way to get started. Uh, and then once you've got your image or PDF in your drawing, uh, then you're going to want to scale it to the most accurate or real world scale and size as you can. And to do that, you're going to want to use the align or the scale command. Either of these is going to work and we're going to go through an example of that right now. So in the case of say a manhole design or detail, we're going to drop that PDF in. So I've got a PDF of a manhole detail. I'm just going to drag and drop that into my drawing. It's going to ask me which page number. I'm just going to hit enter for one and I'm going to choose an insertion point and hit enter to insert it. Now we've got our old or legacy PDF in our drawing. You can see here that by default AutoCAD has uh, kind of inverted the colors. Typically it does this to make it easier to see, but if you'd like to just see it as it is or as it was as a PDF, you can simply select it, open up the properties tab here by hitting control and then one, and you can simply change the adjust color setting to no. Doing this is going to revert it back to like the original style and look of the PDF. So as I mentioned, the first thing you're going to want to do when referencing or scaling any PDF or drawing is set up a scale uh, as accurately as you can. So in the case of this manhole here, I know some of these dimensions. You can see them down here. These are in millimeters. So this one's 180 and this one here is 300. So as long as you know one actual dimension in your drawing, all you need to do is scale it based on that. So we're gonna type in scale and hit enter. And then we're going to choose a base point uh, after you've selected your drawing. And all you're going to need to do is select the two edges or lines from the dimension. So I'm gonna choose this one right here. You can see my white cursor on the black line. And I'm going to type R for reference. And now it's gonna ask me the reference length. I haven't moved my mouse. I'm gonna click again on this bottom line right here. And I'm going to click again at the top of this line here. And this is going to give me the two edges of that dimension. Now I'm going to type in 0.3 for 300 millimeters. So that would be 0.3 of a meter. Uh, but this can be whatever scale or distance that you're using in your drawing. If your drawing is in millimeters or if it's in inches, you're going to want to pick a measurement that corresponds with that. So I'm going to type in 0.3 and it's going to scale it now. So now if I use the distance command, D-I-S-T, and I choose those two lines, we're gonna get roughly 0.3, and you can see there that we're right on the money. We're at 0.3 from this dimension line to this dimension line. So that means that this drawing is now scaled, so the dimensions are going to match up. So after you've got your reference image or PDF scaled and placed in your drawing, the next tip and thing you're gonna to wanna to do is select it and place it on a layer for references. Typically this will be called XREF or references. You can call it whatever you'd like, but this keeps it separate from the actual line work you're drawing and it'll allow things to be customized and made easier later. Another tip is to click the lock button here, and this is going to prevent you from accidentally moving it or scaling it in the process. It's also gonna make sure that it doesn't get selected all the time by accident since you simply want this to exist in your drawing as a reference material behind all of your other objects. Now, before you start drawing, you will typically want to select the layer you'd like your line work to go on. 
I'll just use a generic line work layer here. And one tip that I like to give to new designers is to choose a color for this part that stands out from the image or drawing that you're tracing. You can always change this up later, but the process of tracing your drawing is going to go much quicker uh, if you can see the line work easier and clear. So you can see the blue here kind of stands out. And if you don't like that color, say you don't think it stands out enough, you can always just change that up to something brighter, maybe a yellow or a green, um, anything to make it stand out and easier to see within your drawing. Now, once you start tracing and drawing and digitizing in AutoCAD, you're gonna wanna be using commands like F3 and F8 often. Uh, F3 is going to turn on and off your snap. So if I start a line here, you can see that it snaps to the end of the other line I drew, the yellow line here. If I tap F3, you can see now it's not going to at all. So in our example of our truck, if we go over here, so on something that's a little bit more free form and flowing like this concept Dodge Ram, uh, you're not gonna want to use ortho or F3 all that often. You're gonna wanna be able to kind of freely click wherever you like. So you can see with F8 turned on or ortho, it's snapping to angles. If I tap F8, it turns that off and now I can kind of freely click wherever I'd like. And this is going to save you a ton of time and frustration as you're tracing. If you'd ever like to turn your snaps back on, you simply tap F3 and they're back on so you can continue connecting your lines. Having snaps turned off the majority of time and typically only when you're turning it on when you'd like to track your line or when you'd like to snap to another line is the key for quick and easy digitizing. Another tip I like to give, other than using polylines, the majority of time for your tracing and digitizing is to use X lines for horizontal and vertical guidelines, as well as the spline command. If you're tracing a lot of curves uh, or things like pipes, this is gonna allow you to kind of like keep things wavy and curvy within a single line. Before we move on to some of the other bonus commands and tricks that are gonna speed up your digitization, if you haven't already, don't forget to check out my AutoCAD fundamentals and workflows course. We're gonna teach you everything from template and drawing setup, including like import layers, line types, and styles, all the way to adding XRefs, creating drawings and paper spaces and layouts, packaging up your drawings, annotative text, dimensions, notes, all of that, and a ton more packed into short and easy to understand and follow lessons. I've packed everything I know from over 20 years of experience into this course, and it's available now for a discounted price up above at that link and down below for viewers such as yourself. Now let's keep going with the tutorial. Before we jump into how to import a PDF and have it automatically convert the PDF line work into AutoCAD line work, I'm going to share a couple other quick tips and tricks for uh, digitizing and tracing in AutoCAD. So you're going to want to use the commands like trim, extend, fillet, and block as often as you can. Uh, trim is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to trim objects based on crossing objects. So we're going to type in trim. And if I select here, you can see it's going to trim the object in between here, or it's going to trim off the end of a line. Similarly, the extend command is going to do just that. It's going to extend a line Line until it hits another line for you. This is going to save you a couple clicks and can be super useful when you're creating things like say floor plans and you're connecting walls and uh, windows and that kind of stuff. Uh, the block command as well. Anytime you're doing a repetitive or consistent object within your drawing and you're going to need to reuse it a bunch of times it makes sense to create a block of that object so you can simply type in block select your objects and then a base point and now have a reusable and repeatable block of that object things like uh, signposts or manholes or that kind of thing for say civil that is going to be a huge time saver and then lastly, for these quick tips here, if you select one of your images or PDFs, you're going to get some options up above here 
on the ribbon where you can fade or adjust the contrast to help your tracing. Sometimes it'll help to fade a drawing so that it's less visible and you can see your line work much easier in the process. This is a great thing to use if you're say tracing over old contour maps or site plans, fading the background so you can just see the lines you're trying to recreate is going to speed things up greatly. Now, speaking of the old drawings and PDFs, if you happen to have a PDF or a drawing that was created in something like AutoCAD or a vector style program, you may be able to have those lines instantly recreated within AutoCAD, especially if it was done in a 2D CAD style drawing. So you can see this PDF here that I've got. It's our standard floor plan in a title block, but it is just a, or just a PDF. We don't have this CAD drawing anymore, and we'd like to bring it into AutoCAD. Well, you can actually do that by using the PDF import command, typing it in and hitting enter, and then enter again. You're going to get the browser here. Simply select your PDF that you'd like to bring in. You can choose a few options here, but the ones you're going to definitely want to have on are import your vector geometry, solid as fill, and true type text. Now, this isn't going to be perfect, and a lot of times you won't have the text imported correctly or perfectly, but this is a great start and could save you a ton of drawing and editing if you're trying to recreate pretty standard things that were done in AutoCAD at some point. Hitting OK is going to insert it here, and as I mentioned, you're going to want to scale this just like the other one before, but you can see that all of the line work has actually come in. Now the issue is you're not going to have blocks, so these things here are all going to be kind of broken up objects. But this just saved me a ton of line work. You could delete the title block if you'd like. And now you're left with the basic floor plan. Dimensions are going to be a little bit broken, but you are going to have some text within the drawing and the ability to edit and change these and save time when recreating them. So that's all for today's video. I hope this helped anybody that is digitizing or tracing objects in AutoCAD. If you've got any questions at all, don't forget to leave a comment and let me know down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Cheers and have a good one.